Hello everyone, Anthony here to talk a bit about my floppy setup. I've had a few people ask me about how I got all those lights flashing and all that, so I decided to toss something together real quick for all of you. So let's start with the physical construction. As you can see from the cross section here, it's actually mounted on a hollow box. The idea is to try to make a sort of sound box to help with the resonance of the floppy drives. So that actually doesn't do a great job, since it's a cheap fake wood rather than nice ash or balsa, which is what you're looking for if you have the cash to spare. What it's great for though is containing that giant mess of wires down there and making everything nice and compact so I can take it places or hang it on my wall. Each and every floppy drive is mounted to the door by four screws which thread into the standardized mounting holes, which is really nice. I put some spacers between the hard drive and the door in order to provide a little bit of room for the LEDs, which we'll be looking at later. To make the insides more accessible, you'll see that I actually cut the door in half and bolted it together at the corners. If you undo those bolts, you'll get to the inside and see this fantastic mess of wires. Uh, so focusing on the hard drives for now, you can see this wonderful video of me uh, unscrewing each of the four screws on one of the hard drives. And when I'm done with that, I'll be able to lift it up and the hard drive comes free. So all eight of those hard drives are mount mounted on there the exact uh, same way. So back to the wire mess. I'm not particularly proud of this, but everything that's there needs to be there. So some things you'll be able to see is in the middle, we have uh, the circuit board I designed to control the LEDs, which we'll talk about later. On the right, you see a lot of loose cable ends, which is where the Arduino would sit. In the bottom, underneath some of the duct tape, you'll have the power distribution center, which I'll show a video of later. And that the eight locations on the outside of the board are the holes through which the wires get threaded in order to plug into the hard drives and lighting on the other side of the door. So let's take a closer look at the power distribution stuff. What you see I've got here is just a standard Molex plug, much like you'd find in a computer. And what that gives you is the 5 volts on the red wire, the 12 volts on the yellow wire, and ground on the black wire. So um, if you take all of these wires, the 12 volt goes to the LED supply, since we have 12 volt LEDs, and the 5 volts goes down to these wire nuts here to power the floppy drives. All eight of floppy drives get powered off the same 5 volt cable there uh, and go into the wire nut. The ground here, I've got two of them and I splice them together and take them to the other wire nut, which again takes the ground from all of the other eight floppy drives. Now the reason I put everything on one Molex plug is because we've got this great power supply that connects to just a regular 120 volt power outlet and on the other side gives you a Molex plug with the 12 volts and 5 volts right there. So what that means is instead of connecting it to a big PC power supply like most other setups, you've got just one simple light brick that you can use and carry with you. Now eventually all these wires makes their way into one of these holes, which looks like this on the other side. In total you're looking at seven wires per floppy drive. So let's take a look at what they do specifically. You have two wires to power the LEDs. You have two wires, again, to power the floppy drive, 5 volts and ground. And finally, you have three wires to send instructions to the floppy drive, those being step, direction select, and ground. People have found a, quite a few different ways of wiring these together in the past, but fortunately for me, I had these random 0.1 inch space headers laying around which I was able to solder wires to. You know, if you've got the skills, it's nice to make these things neat with some heat shrink like I did. If not, you know, just do whatever works. So that brings us to the secret sauce of this setup, which are these great LED strips. You can get them from Hit Lights off Amazon, and I think I paid like 15 or 20 bucks for a nice long reel of these things. They're very cheap. As you can see, they've got a positive and a negative output. You can snip them to size, and you've got this adhesive on the back. So those are pretty fantastic. So I've got a 12 volt power supply here, one end on the positive, one on the negative, and holy crap, those are really bright. Very nice stuff to work with. So what I do on the actual floppy drive is I just wrap them around a little piece of wood and put the drives on top and you have that underglow effect that everyone sees in the videos. 
To allow the Arduino to turn the LEDs on and off, we use these small devices called MOSFETs. MOSFETs are essentially just voltage-controlled switches. For N-type MOSFETs, a high voltage at the base will allow current to flow, while a low voltage will stop it. So the circuit board you saw earlier is pretty simple. It's just eight of these simple switching circuits. Important note about this schematic. The bottom of the MOSFET, or the source, is connected to ground. For N-types, that's a good rule of thumb to use whenever using them to switch loads. And of course, to make use of this, we have to modify the Arduino's code so that it will set the LED pin to high whenever it receives a note from the software. I've attached the code that I used for this below. Anyhow, thanks for listening, and make sure to check out the videos of this thing in action. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Bye-bye.